Native News Today. Welcome to Native News Today, everyone. Jason Salzman along with Gerald Wofford. And Gerald, from the principal chief of the Seminole Nation to fast pitch softball, we got everything covered this week on Native News Today. That is right. A plethora, if you will, of Native American stories. All this on Native News Today. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff covered. We went to Tahlequah, Seminole, Oklahoma City, all kinds of things going on this week, and we've really put the miles on the car. So lots of great things coming up for you folks. Grab a chair. You don't want to go anywhere because in the next 30 minutes, we've got lots of great Native American stories right here. Hi, I'm Jason Salzman, and we're very proud of our program here at Native News Today. But what you may not know, it's just a small part of a fully functioning multimedia center, the Muscogee Creek Nation Communications Department. The Communications Department is involved in every aspect of media, whether it be print with the Muscogee Nation News, the official publication of the Muscogee Creek Nation, as well as graphic design. The graphic design department here can offer everything from event invitations to banners to even calendars and desk decals. It's all involved here, as well as photography, a professional grade studio where Muscogee Creek citizens can receive discount rates for things such as senior pictures and family portraits. So for all of your multimedia needs, please don't hesitate to come down to the Muscogee Creek Nation Communications Department, located in Altmulgee at the Capitol Complex, or you can reach us by phone at 918-732-7720. Let us help you get your name out there. Hey, this is Adman. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. Hey, this is Craig Jeezy. Smoking counts for 400,000 deaths in the United States each year. Yo, I'm the Silverback, and we're the Jasper Kings, and we'd like to invite you to join us at the Native Voice for Native Youth Talent Show and Concert for Tobacco Prevention. We have too many kids smoking when they're young. Thanks, and we hope to see you there. We got too many kids smoking, smoking when they're young. Got too and welcome back to Native News Today. Jason, you guys ventured down into Seminole country, right? Absolutely, Gerald. We were down in Weewoka at the complex of the Seminole Tribe of Oklahoma, and we got to visit with one of Oklahoma's great public servants and ambassadors, Enoch Kelly Haney, the principal chief of the Seminole Tribe of Oklahoma. And Kelly has uh, done everything from being a state senator to an accomplished artist, and now he's leading the Seminole Tribe as the principal chief. And we talked to him about an important election coming up for that tribe. We are in Weewoka, Oklahoma, at the capital of the great Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. And standing here to my right is one of our most decorated public servants in Oklahoma history, but he is also the principal chief of the great Seminole Nation in this state, Enoch Kelly Haney. And uh, Mr. Haney, I want to thank you for being on the program, first of all, and welcome, welcoming us here to the capital and in your office. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate the service you give to the people of your district and, and also that serves in our area as well. Absolutely. Now, one of the things, uh, we'd love to just sit here and uh, shoot the breeze with you a while, but we got to talk a little business because we have some history going on inside of the great Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, and that is uh, a special election that will be going on at the Seminole Nation Days there coming up uh, here in just a few weeks out at the Miccosukee Mission out there. So we got to talk about the resolution passed, first of all, by your council of the Seminole Nation allowing for the special election and what this election will be doing for all of our uh, viewers out there. One, it will be establishing a tribal court system. Two, removing BIA secretarial approval of constitutional amendments. Now, total sovereignty and self-determination are just one step away for the Great Seminole Nation. Uh, it is, and um, so many other tribes, uh, most other tribes have tribal courts, and, and there was an attempt to do that here, and I think there was some glitch that happened with the BIA and and approval and we're taking another run at it i think i think it'll pass but we can't ever take it for granted what it does it stabilizes the tribal government a, a court a, a competent jurisdiction always is the last place you go to settle legal issues and we do not have that and until such, such time we do we're not we're not complete as a government and i think once we pass this and we'll we'll feel like that uh, we have become um, a, a stable government and we'll be able to better serve the Seminole people. 
Sure, that's what it's uh, all about here. And I know you're well schooled in the legal actions and things like that. And one of the main thing about courts and and uh, in the legal system basically is precedence. And one of the examples I would give on the importance of tribes having court systems is just recently here with what's been going on with the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they had a an, an unbelievable case come up where they were trying to do what they felt was right for their tribe, mm -hmm. and their tribal court system's ruling was upheld by the Supreme Court. Is that a good example to look at and say, hey, we need this for our tribe? It, it is a good example, and, and the fact that you we do have uh, if, if uh, a uh, person decides to carry it to the Supreme Court, then our courts have to be uh, well-versed, they have to be um, uh, attorneys, people who are in the law, most generally people who are already judges, to make these decisions because those decisions that are made have to be uh, upheld by the Supreme Court as it relates to Indian issues. I think that was a good, uh, very good uh, sign. Uh, we did, uh, the Seminole Nation by resolution did go and support of the Cherokees' ability to, to manage their own business and, and uh, to recognize their sovereignty. So we, we're very proud to do that. And the, the federal government, even uh, since 1993's uh, passing of the Indian Tribal Justice Act, mm -hmm. has shown uh, the faith to put in the tribes to have their own court systems. And it's up to us to establish these court systems. And I think the Seminole Nation is picking up the reins there and, and getting ready to do something very historic for this tribe here. Now, one of the good things I want to mention to everybody out there is you can vote. Uh, just one time, though. But you can right. vote at any of the precincts on, on the day of the election. And it's going on at what could be a better time than right there at Seminole Nation Day. That's right. September uh, 20th on Saturday is the, is the major Seminole Nation Day. Uh, and uh, that's when the course uh, uh, issue will be brought up for a vote. We have three voting precincts in Seminole County, Strathers, Miccosukee, and Sasakwa. Uh, we also have established a, uh, a um, voting poll in Tulsa as well as Oklahoma City. And uh, a, as you say, a member, can, uh, a member who's eligible to vote can vote in any one of those elections. And to, uh, to answer the question of duplicate voting, there is a system in place that will prohibit that from happening. Very good, very good. Now, I've, that is one of the great things is if you are a Seminole and you're in Oklahoma City on that day, you can stop by the creek, uh, the uh, Muscogee Creek, Oklahoma City uh, building there up in Oklahoma City, or Tulsa at the Creek Indian Community Center, I believe it is, right? Right, right. And uh, you're, wherever, if you're in those places, or if you're down here enjoying the uh, Seminole Nation days, which I know a lot of us will be, you can do it down here, too, at the Miccosukee Mission there, and as you said, in Sasakwa and Strathers, too. So a very historic time for the uh, Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. And I know you and your staff and everyone here are very excited about the chance to uh, have the citizens say yes and have that great sovereignty. It, uh, we are, and, and we think it's a great move for the Seminole Nation. It's a tribute also to our council to be able to uh, authorize this movement. It, it was very quick. But we, we're on target to make sure everything takes place in the way that it should. So we appreciate, we appreciate your help and, and the Creek Nation for the, uh, for the help you've given us in terms of space and availability of space in, in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Uh, let me do make this clear that any tribal citizen who's eligible to vote can vote and make a Suki mission on that day. They don't have to go to some of the other areas that's been designated. Okay, so it's right there. It's almost done for everyone. You can just, uh, all these locations, everything is set up just right for the citizens to make it, you know, uh, accessible, everything, and uh, all the information's out there. That's what we're hoping to do here. We want to make sure everybody knows the uh, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and make sure it's all, all uh, everything's taken care of. So, um, I, and one of the other things I would ask you before we let you go here is you've uh, been chief for some time here at the Great Seminole Nation and wh where does this rank which you think as far as importance and, and maybe uh, for the future and the, the generations that come after? There were many um, uh, objectives that this administration had in, in coming in to do many things but uh, at the top of the chart was uh, stabilizing the government. I said the number one objective is to stabilize the, the, the tribe because we've had two incidents in the last 20 years that really was devastating to the nation's government and in effect affects our people. 
and our ability to serve the people. Uh, so this, this for me personally even, is, is probably the, the best thing we've done. There are other areas we've been very successful at, and uh, we, have a, we have an emphasis going on trying to deal with the issue of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. As you know, Native women are uh, abused two and a half times more than any other race of people. And the council saw fit to, they're in process of purchasing some property, and, and they've, uh, they've put up $250,000 to, in addition to uh, build a facility uh, for, for women. And, and uh, we have a program ongoing, which is a year old now. So we're very serious about that issue. And, and the uniqueness of what we do is, is we don't just, it's not reserved just for our members. It, any, any citizen in Seminole County needs help. It doesn't have to be Indian. We just think if they need help, we're going to help. That's the Indian way. <laughs> that, it definitely is. Yes. yes. So uh, we uh, great to be here today, and uh, wonderfully, uh, it's exciting to know all the great and wonderful things that the Seminole Nation is doing, and uh, your administration is taking care of. So good hands with this man right here, as just as well as everything he's ever been a part of. So we want to thank you again, Chief Haney, okay. and it's such an honor to be here, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Jason, so many things happening out there in Indian country, especially in the Oklahoma City area. Yeah, every now and again, our travels take us west, and uh, we were in the big city for the American Indian Cultural Center and Museum's big day. It is the dedication of the promontory mound structure there for the new American Indian Cultural Center and Museum that will be going up, and it is a magnificent structure, and uh, there's been some things going on in the last few months, really, in the life of this building that has taken place, so we were able to talk to Gina Timberman about some of these things going down. This is a wonderful day for the American Indian Cultural Center and Museum located right off the river here in downtown Oklahoma City and I am with Miss Gina Timberman and you know her she has been on the program before but it has been a few months Gina since we've talked to you about this wonderful site and the progress it's making. Now as you look at the last few months there's been some tense times and there's been some very jubilant times. This is probably the culmination of all the exhilaration that's gone into this project. It really is, and uh, I appreciate you so much coming back out because there have been times we've come out in construction where there wasn't as much progress happening on site and in the cold months, and now as we've moved, as we've progressed construction into this phase, you see the completion of the Great Promontory. If you look over, the Visitor Welcome Center is near completion. You see all of the footings of the building and galleries spaces and all of the preparation that has gone into place to prepare this massive hall of the people with about 110 feet of steel that will be erected today and the symbolism for today really is a milestone in the iconic architectural pieces for the project this great promontory took about 42,000 truckloads of earth it's about 1.7 billion pounds of soil and really if one starts below the earth's grade on this beautiful journey walk and walks about 1,780 feet, you'll reach the peak. And that's really symbolic of the journey of Native people to this present day experience. Our past coming together with the present and then looking to the future. And at the peak at 90 feet, looking out over the beautiful view of the city and the region, it really is a place to um, really remember our ancestors, to recognize who we are today and to look to the future as native people so this really is a milestone day in this next phase we will continue to seed all of the soil to continue the stabilization and really implement an irrigation system so that we can keep it a beautiful promontory mound yeah it's a wonderful thing you've made so much progress even since we've been here and it's not really been that long but you're the executive director of the state agency in charge of putting this whole thing on. Do you ever get overwhelmed? But I know you got a great staff behind you, too. You know, any time I feel overwhelmed, I really look to um, the benefit of having strong-willed, talented people around me that keep the project moving and the positive support and influence of a strong Native community here in Oklahoma that pushes this project to its next step. Um, and it can be challenging to not see the fruits of your labor when construction can be at slower times or prior to construction. But I have to say that to come out to the site, to be with the site, to see the transformation that's taking place is truly motivating. And the benefit of that uh, really outweighs any burden of feeling uh, overwhelmed any time. Yeah, and uh, we, I mean, we got a little bit of everybody out here. There's tribal dignitaries, uh, elders out. We got uh, state agencies. We got... Um, 
media all kinds and we even got this helicopter this guy keeps <laughs> flying around here getting good shots so but anyway gina we uh we're so glad to be here today and it, this is just another step along the process i know but uh i know for you and your staff and everybody it's been a lot of uh a lot of times getting in there and getting the help and everything and getting everybody really to buy into the center have, have you felt that that's paid off it really has and i and when we began visiting with tribal communities early in the project's history uh, it really became apparent that we needed to incorporate traditional elements of the earth, land and the earth, water, wind, fire, also concepts that really spoke to the hearts of Native people here. Also some different elements of building structure, building with the earth, just the concept of that. And also looking at different traditional architectural forms like the Wichita Grass House and instilling that sense of architecture into the building space. Those discussions and interaction with Native communities have in the past continu um, continuously fed this development of the project. And this is an ongoing thing. The discussions are feeding the content behind the exhibition development, behind the uh, development of the programs and will continue to unveil the face of native communities throughout the different architectural spaces so it, it is paying off it has and it and it's something that will give this a sense of being a native place but I have to say that um, one of the most important aspects about today is this promontory mound is the evidence that our native people are still here that despite um, negative uh, uh, historic um, events we are here today we adapt and we endure and so it's about the past but it's very much about the present and who we are and that's a very positive thing that's probably the main thing that this place is being done right mm -hmm. it's been done the right way and and the research has went in a proper care has been taken to everything every single aspect of this place and uh, I can't applaud you enough this uh, young lady you. is doing wonderful things thank in Indian you very country much. thank and you for your support absolutely and we will be back in a few months just to see where everything's going and make sure that it's just trucking right along well, this is your cultural center too, so you will be welcome back with open arms. Okay, wow, I'm expecting you to give me the keys when I get back there. <laughs> All right, see you. Thank you. You know, Gerald, a lot of uh, buzz has been going on this summer about the blockbuster hit of Batman and uh, a lot of things going on with, uh, you know, superheroes out there. But I, from what I understand, we have one right here in Altmulgee. That's right. The Creek Nation Tobacco Prevention Program, which is actually in Okima, has created a superhero, if you will, mm. called the Wind Warrior, okay. educating kids about the abuse of tobacco, the commercial tobacco. And Cynthia Tampia from the program here is to talk about and introduce the Wind Warrior. My name is Cynthia Tampia, and I'm the program manager of the Muskogee Creek Nation Tobacco Prevention Program. And when we started working with you several years ago, uh, there really wasn't anything, a uh, role model that we really, uh, kids could identify with. And so as we began to work with kids, they, you know, they really needed someone that they could, they could look up to. And so we just decided that they could create their own. And we started out with an art contest where we had several entries, over 100 entries, where kids uh, thought about uh, who they, what they would like to see in a superhero. And that's when we came up with Wind Warrior, who is a, a Native American superhero that um, takes on education for the kids and uh, fights the tobacco industry with marketing, uh, using Native images for marketing. And we try to incorporate a lot of the Native teachings um, wind Warrior being a, a powerful uh, from the Wind Clan and, and a lot of the names, uh, Halak to Wind, and a lot of uh, that they could identify with in everyday life that they have to live, you know, uh, within the Muskogee Creek Nation. And it has just, it's been a youth driven project where they come up with the names, they come up with the costume, they come up with the storyline in the comic strip. And we hope to include uh, other programs that would create their own superheroes so uh, people will have something, the kids will have something to look up to and something to look forward to. And this has been created by the youth and uh, all of it has been done by the youth. All we've been doing is just providing them resources and, and they have just uh, worked with it all. We wanted to do a comic book at first and then, uh, but we wanted the Wind Warrior to be uh, uh, continuous, not just a, 
a one-time thing. And so that's when we came up with a comic strip where uh, it would be in the newspaper, the kids could follow it and uh, keep, you know, gathering together and creating storyline. And so we just uh, did the comic strip and they, they work with it uh, about every two weeks. They, they gather here and, and just talk about storyline, what they would like to see him do and what happens next. Gerald, this time of year is always exciting for you and I because we're big football fans and uh, the grass is getting cut out there and the two-a-days and everything and the uh, end of August always signals football season and there's a couple of Indian kids down in Muskogee doing a great job. That is right. We ventured over to the famous Indian Bowl there mm -hmm. in uh, Muskogee High School. The Muskogee Ruffers, as they're officially called, Matt Messer and Parker Bulovich, who are proudly representing the Ruffer football team this year and hope great things for that Ruffer football team at the end of the year. We are at the famed Indian Bowl in Muskogee, Oklahoma, where they had the introduction of this year's Ruffer High School football players. And I'm talking with two of the gentlemen here that make it happen, two Native American football players that make it happen here for the Muskogee Ruffers, Mr. Parker Bolovich and Mr. Matt Messer here. I'm going to start over here with Parker first. Parker, tell us your tribe and tell us the positions that you play here for the Muskogee Ruffers. It's, uh, I'm a member of the Kiowa tribe and uh, I play offensive line and defensive line. And Matt, you? I'm Creek Indian and I uh, play defensive end and uh, offensive line and fullback. Matt, starting with you, you're the senior here. Tell us what it means to you tonight to be introduced in front of the home crowd, senior year, getting ready for another year. Well, it's just a lot that we've been waiting on, you know, just been getting ready for this year for the past, since we were freshmen, just getting ready for it. And we hope we can do good this year. How about you, Parker, being out here in front of the crowd and everything, uh, getting introduced? What do you think about that? It's, uh, it's a thrill. I mean, you, you get the fans here, and they start thinking about the season. And it uh, brings us together as a community, let people know, get involved. It's a, it's a good thing. Well, I know this year, just like every year, everyone anticipates a great year. They want everyone to do well. They would love for you guys to go undefeated throughout the whole year. How do you feel? You know, training this past summer, how do you feel about the, the team coming into this fall? Uh, I feel it's good. I feel it, we uh working together as a real team this year. past couple of years we've had a couple superstar type people that just kind of kind of people think we rely on them and things. But uh, this year we're really working together, coming, molding together, going to get some things done this year. And Matt, I know you play uh, different uh, positions there, offense and defense. But some personal goals that you have for yourself this year, what are those? Uh, just do good in class and come out on Fridays and perform and get looked at by colleges and go to college. Any college or anyone you have in mind that you'd hope to play for? Uh, there, there are a couple, you know, just a couple that are talking to me, you know, like UCO, Missouri State. That's just a couple. How about you, Parker? What's your future plans? Well, uh, I plan to attend uh, Oklahoma University, not for uh, – not on a football scholarship, but uh, not quite that good. <laughs> but uh, the law school, we're looking at that, and uh, hopefully I can get there. That is the plan. Parker Bulovich and Matt Messer. Gentlemen, all the best of luck to you this year. We appreciate your time. Right, thank you. Jason, we conclude today's program with another sports story. You and your team went up to uh, Tahlequah country up there and played in a softball tournament and were coached by a local legend. Yes, a local legend indeed. And uh, I not only refer to him as a local legend, but I also refer to him as my uncle, I'm proud to say, Mr. Grover Wind. And he uh, put a team together. And really this started out in, in his eyes as a family get together. And uh, that's what it's all about, family getting together to play some fast pitch softball. Let's go. My name is Grover Wind, and uh, I'm the coach of the Indigenous Fast Pitch All Indian soft, uh, Softball Team. Obviously, we're playing in Telequah, to the Telequah Fast Pitch Tournament, the uh, festival tournament. We're trying to teach some of the younger ones that uh, have not played the game, and some of the slow pitch players. We've lost some good athletes slow pitch, and we're trying to bring them back into the game. And this is this is our way of doing it. I've got a another coach with me, Bob Crestor, who played with me for years. He's here to help them with the hitting, and we just we're just trying 
to get fast pitch back up. Uh, you know, I know it's a dying game, and I know it's yeah, I know it's hard uh, to get people interested in it. But uh, we're trying we're, we're trying to get it to the point where where it's where it used to be. I hate to see there's a lot of good athletes in slow pitch, and I hate to I hate to see them going over slow pitch. Not there's anything wrong with slow pitch. I don't mean that, but fast pitch to me has always been an indigenous game. As I said before, I think the best, uh, the best athletes that I have seen in fast pitch have been Native Americans. You know, not only f not only for speed, hitting, but uh, just the enthusiasm of playing the game. I mean, they just they just I don't know whether to, uh, I don't know whether they come from playing stickball over years or what, but uh, uh, fast pitch and Native Americans just go hand in hand. Call Jay. Call Jay. And I've been around, I've been fortunate, I've been blessed, as my wife said. I've been around a lot of good uh, Indian athletes over the years. Back when we were playing in the 70s and 80s, we always had at least two younger pitchers that were played the outfield or were, were becoming pitchers that we would bring them along slowly and to develop them. We would never throw them into the fire, so to speak. Nowadays, you don't have that many pitchers who are waiting, uh, who are they're throwing them in the fire. If they got a pitcher that can throw halfway decent or hard, then they're they're throwing them to, they're throwing them to the wolves basically. Not enough hits, man. Not enough hits. Gotta get going. Starts right here, huh? Hey boy, wait, hey boy. Boy. wait, wait right. And boy, somebody wait asked boy. me one time we were talking about this. Somebody asked me, well, why don't you do something about it? So I told my wife, I said, I'm going to. I said, I'm going, I'm going to. I'm going to uh, get my young one, my young kin folks together that want to play. And they've been after me for two or three years to play. They want to play. Then we're going to go play. When that, when that, lady, when that person t told me that, uh, well, why don't you do something about it, it kind of lit a fire in me. Yes, okay, here I am talking about, well, okay, we're losing fast pitch. They won't play or, or pitchers won't. All right, why don't I do something about it? And this is, this is what, and I'm hoping to encourage a lot of uh, some of the older, I see some of the older teams out here, older players doing the same thing. So hopefully we'll keep uh, Native American fast pitch alive. And tomorrow, either, you know, there's no second chance. We're gonna have to come to play. Uh, Mikey done a good job. Good, good job, Mike. Right. Keep us in it, man. And I've been around. I've been fortunate. I've been blessed, as my wife said. I've been around a lot of good uh, Indian athletes over the years. There's a fire there that, yeah, I'd love to be able to go out and do it. You know, to me, the greatest, the greatest feeling I have is obviously I like to win. But the greatest feeling I have is seeing the, the younger ones mature into something. I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of players that are even playing down here now for different teams that played for me at one time. Uh, some of them pitching. You know, I've got some pitch for turkeys. I've got some guys that played on the team that we just played used to play for me. So uh, I got to see them just like I did these young ones starting out playing and develop on up. You know, and, and again, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to see. I'd like to see these young ones have the fire that, that we older ones have. And that concludes another program of Native News Today. This being Labor Day weekend, of course, we hope that your Labor Day weekend is safe and happy and that you're taking a little time off to enjoy yourself. Yes, and we hope that it's not too labored. That is right, that you're enjoying yourself, you know, watching the Native News Today program. Absolutely. Hey, record it and watch it later. Record it and watch it later. It's almost like uh, going to get ice cream. You really can't finish it and you throw it in the freezer and then, you know, three hours later, voila, you got your... Or that Indian snack. taco, yeah. Or an Indian taco, you know, half-eaten fry bread. It's just like Native News Today. And Stay gets, a little now and watch it later. It gets better later on. All right. You guys take care. We'll see you soon, all right?